Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video we are going to be taking this 1930s writing bureau by a company called Gentique which is a guy called Jeffrey Jenkins and apparently this guy used to be quite a world famous toy maker before he started designing and manufacturing furniture and he's quite famous for a failed invention of a water-powered hydraulic toothbrush. Just what everybody needs. Uh, yeah, apparently that didn't do too well. It was uh, super expensive to buy and super expensive to make. So he focused on his furniture. You will see a lot of Gentique furniture. This, like I say, this is from the 1930s and it's a writing bureau, but he's probably more famous in the 50s and 60s for his mid-century modern sideboards. So this is a piece of furniture for a customer. This was a mother's furniture, and it was loved by her at one point, but unfortunately it spent probably the last decade in my customer's garage being used as a tool chest. So she really wanted to get this restored and I said I would be able to help. So stay tuned and you will be absolutely amazed by the result at the end of this video. The finish on this was totally failing as you can see here. Uh, I think it's shellac, but I've never actually been able to remove a top coat before with my shop back. So, unfortunately, this didn't work for all of the piece, just, just on the sides for some reason. You can just about make out the manufacturer's mark stamped in the back here. So I'm just trying to darken it up so you can see. As always, I like to start each job by giving the piece a thorough clean. It's, it, I guess it's not really needed in this case because I am going to strip the finish, but it's just, it's just part of my process and I like to start with a clean piece. So the first job is to remove the handles from the drawers and straightforward just screws at the back. So remove them and just remove the handle ready to restore later. I've done quite a few of these writing bureaus now and it's so much easier to just take it to bits really. So I always remove the drop down desk front so I can get to the hinges and then there are the pigeon holes inside which you need to get at by removing the back of the unit, which you'll see in a second. You could see me there just trying to see how the pigeonholes inside were actually fixed to the unit. So to get a better look, I'm going to take the back off. As you could see there, there were some screws that are removed, but unfortunately it's also nailed in, which, which is a pain really. I'm just banging it from the other side just to try and push the nails out a bit, just so I can get the pliers on them. Unfortunately, not all the nails did that, and this took quite a while to get off. But I got there in the end and, you know, didn't create too much damage. The pigeonholes were just simply nailed into the side of the unit, so they were fairly easy to take out once I got the back off. Thank <laughs> you. 
As you can see there, I started to remove the existing finish with the scraper and my sander, but I soon dropped that idea because I had to do these details anyway with the paint stripper just because you know it's just almost impossible to get in with a sander paint stripper in a little a little soft wire brush just to get into the details and remove that this actually worked really well this stripper so that informed my decision going forward i put the scraper to one side and i then decided to strip the entire piece which took me a long time was very messy but probably it would have took a lot longer with the scraper and the sander. Hopefully from that you can see why I chose to go down the route of using stripper. It, it is a messy job and it, you know it's, it doesn't take five minutes, it takes a long time because you have to put it on, wait for it, neutralize it, put it back on again if, you, if you've not pulled up any of the top coat and then neutralize again. So it's not quick but it's probably less time consuming than just sanding the finish off. The top coat on this was was so thick and so dark it actually hid the the beautiful wood grain in this in this oak piece of furniture and I think it'd be refinished over and over again over the years so it, it definitely needed stripping back down to the bare wood. Can't sit on my knee. <laughs> okay, maybe you can. Maybe you can sit on my knee. Then. <laughs> okay, yeah. This is, <laughs> this is what I have to put up with. As I mentioned at the start of the video, this has been used as a tool chest, so the drawers were in a bit of a sorry state. They definitely needed attention and they got completely sanded and refinished. Despite the state this was in, there was only really one drawer that had the veneer damaged on it. I wanted to try and patch that. So I had some I had some veneer, some edge band walnut veneer, and I was just trying to see if that was a good match. I also had some oak veneer, and I've got a big box of old veneer off cut, so I was just trying to find something that was suitable.
After trying quite a few veneers, I decided that the, the oak would be the best once it was stained. So all I'm doing here is I'm just neatening up the damage just by cutting it nice and straight. And then it's just a case of cutting the appropriate size piece of new veneer and sticking that in. Just make sure that the cut you do is nice and clean and free from any adhesive and has got you know as crisp an edge as you can manage. Before staining, just make sure to remove all the dust that you possibly can. I do that with my vac just to blow the dust off and then wipe it over with mineral spirits. And then it's ready for stain. I'm using my Morel's alcohol-based penetrating stain. And again, this is another two-tone piece. This is the, the walnut colour and the majority of the bureau is going to be in this colour. Uh, but you'll see shortly it will have a contrasting colour. For those of you that have watched my other videos, you will know that if it's got a dovetail joint, then I am either going to paint it or I'm going to stain it. I just really like how it adds that little bit of detail to it. I'm just pointing out here some of the sort of overlap of the, the walnut stain onto the area that I'm going to do in a different colour. And it's okay, that's why I did the center parts first, so I could just sand back those solid wood bits. The next color stain I'm using is the Ebony. Again, it's a Morel's alcohol-based penetrating stain. And this is what I am using to cover the rest of the piece. The draw pulls on the bureau were solid oak and they had a lovely rebated section in the middle. So I just removed the old finish, give them a sand, just clean them up and then I did the two-tone design on the handles just to pick out the two-tone design of the bureau. The plan for these hinges was to strip off the old finish, clean them up and then spray paint them. But you'll see in a second, once I'd removed that old finish and cleaned them up, they were absolutely beautiful and they stayed like that with no spray paint on them at all. The top coat I'm using is a water-based poly by a company called Polyvine. 
I'm just spraying that on. It's, it's my sort of go-to top coat if I'm using a water-based poly. It just goes on really nice and I get a really nice smooth finish. So usual procedure, I spray it with light coats, wait for it to dry and then knock it back with a brown paper bag just to take off any dust nibs and then it gets another two coats with a rub down in between each coat. All the drawers were pretty dried out, so they all got a treatment of the Howard's Feed and Wax just to nourish them and protect them. The little drawer, the little pen drawer from inside the unit had a bad ink stain on it and I couldn't get rid of it. So I decided to cover it with some nice green felt. And not only did it cover the stain, it just made it look so much better as well. It looked like it was always meant to be there. Just the last few details now, and I'm using some black rub and buff just to add some black to some of the details of the unit. And that's pretty much it. All I need to do then is add the handles and we're done. So I'd just like to say a massive thank you if you've stayed this far. And if you feel like I've earned it, please subscribe, like, and share the video. It really helps out the channel if you like it and Hopefully you enjoy the final reveal.